Hello everyone, Dr. Polaris here. For much of their evolutionary history, the dogs of the family Canidae were endemic to North America, first appearing on the continent during the late Eocene about 38 million years ago. The first canids were small and generalised omnivores such as the basal Hesperocyon, a tiny animal that weighed a mere 1.8 kilograms or 3.9 pounds. This genus would have more closely resembled a modern civet or raccoon than a dog, possessing an elongated body, flexible tail and relatively short limbs that were not well adapted for running. The bones of the middle ear and the structure of the teeth, however, definitively placed the animal as a basal canid. It would have also retained the retractable claws of the ancestral caniform carnivorans, allowing Hesperocyon to effectively climb trees in order to escape from larger predators. Only a few modern canids are capable of some degree of scansorial behaviour, including the grey fox and raccoon dog, with Hesperocyon probably living similarly to these forms. Clearly a highly successful genus, this little dog persisted in what is now Western North America for at least 11 million years surviving the end Eocene extinction event and continuing on into the early Oligocene. It would be during this period that canids would truly begin to thrive and diversify, with the familiar canines and, the subject of today's episode, the Borophagines, evolving from Hesperocyon-like ancestors. Often referred to as the bone-crushing dogs, due to the specialised adaptations of some later Miocene species, this distinctive canid lineage was far more diverse than this moniker would suggest. First appearing during the early Oligocene roughly 34 million years ago, probably in response to the end Eocene extinction event, Borophagine started out in modest style, remaining similar to the more basal Hesperocyonines. The genus Archaeocyon was among the oldest members of the subfamily, being a generalised civet-like omnivore that inhabited western and central North America. About the size of a domestic cat, this little animal retained a plantar-grade foot structure and lacked adaptations for fast running, probably being more at home in open woodland environments. Another small and basal form was Atarocyon, native to the early Oligocene of Montana, Wyoming and South Dakota. With a name meaning large-eared dog, this relatively short-faced omnivore possessed cranial features that were very similar to those of the modern Fennec fox particularly in terms of the structure of the middle ear. This strongly suggests an animal with large pointed ears, which are probably adapted for dissipating heat and for detecting underground prey. A slightly more derived early Borophagine, Synarctoides, was even stranger. First appearing in the Oligocene and persisting until the Middle Miocene, this animal was among the smallest canids to ever live with all seven known species only weighing up to one kilogram or 2.2 pounds in weight. Possessing an unusual tooth structure unlike any living dog, it has been suggested that this genus was specialised for eating fruits, nuts and possibly plant material. Its small size and plantar-grade feet would have enabled Synarctoides to effectively climb trees in search of these foodstuffs, in effect living more like a modern civet. From here, the more derived clade Borophagini split off, which were generally larger and more predatory than their more basal relatives. A good example of a basal member of Borophagini was the genus Synarctus, which was native to most of what is now the United States during the mid to late Miocene until about 10.3 million years ago. A coyote-sized animal, Synarctus possessed a stronger bite than its earlier cousins, and likely incorporated a larger amount of meat in its diet, probably feeding on rodents and lagomorphs. However, it would have still been dietarily flexible, much like modern foxes, with a large percentage of its caloric intake stemming from fruit, plant matter and insects. Beginning in the early Miocene, members of Borophagini began to transition towards increasingly predaceous niches, developing powerful jaws and robust crushing dentition suited for tackling larger prey. The genus Tephrocyon, native to the middle Miocene of the United States, was about the size of a modern grey wolf, and possessed shortened jaws equipped with slicing carnassials for dispatching prey. A similar genus, Iluridon, was approximately the same size, weighing between 35 and 50 kilograms, or 77 to 110 pounds. Apparently a highly successful animal, this genus persisted for at least 10 million years, being more robustly built than any modern canid. 
Iluridon would not have been as effective at running long distances, instead preferring an ambush hunting technique to bring down horses, camelids, and peccaries. The jaws were capable of delivering crushing bites, similar to those of modern spotted hyenas, with larger species such as Iluridon taxoides possibly hunting in packs. However, not all derived Borophagians were devoted carnivores. The odd Carposcion possessed reduced dentition that suggests a far more generalised diet than in other later Borophagians, with the genus name meaning fruit dog. Perhaps this animal was somewhat similar to the South American maned wolf, with a large portion of its caloric intake consisting of vegetable matter supplemented with small prey. However, the most famous members of the subfamily were hypercarnivores, including the namesake of the entire group, the genus Borophagus. Among the youngest members of the clade, persisting in North America until the late Pliocene roughly two million years ago, Borophagus was not a particularly large animal, being comparable to a coyote in terms of body length, but was far more heavily built. Its crushing premolar teeth and strong jaw muscles would have been used to crack open bones, much like the hyenas of Afro-Eurasia. However, fossils of this animal are so abundant and geographically widespread that some paleontologists now argue that Borophagus must have been the dominant carnivore of its time, and thus an active predator, because carrion feeding alone could not have sustained such a large population. They note that not all carnivores with bone-cracking ability are scavengers, such as the modern spotted hyena. Instead, they interpret these abilities as an adaptation to social hunting, where complete utilisation of a carcass was favoured. Coprolites from Borophagus further validate its bone-crushing abilities, while simultaneously indicating it occupied a niche no longer seen in the present-day ecosystems of North America. Potential prey for Borophagus include herbivores like the camel Apicamelus, the pronghorn Cosorix, horses like Neohipparion and Nanippus, and the ancient peccary Prosthenops. However, this was far from the largest Borophagian, with that honour going to the impressive early to late Miocene genus Episcion. This was the largest known canid of all time, with the type species reaching 2.4 metres or 7.9 feet in length, standing 90 centimetres tall at the shoulder, and weighing approximately 100 to 125 kilograms on average, or that is 220 to 276 pounds. The largest known specimen, consisting of a single humerus, was an individual weighing up to 170 kilograms, or 370 pounds. This is comparable to a modern American black bear in terms of mass. Possessing a blunt snout and massive skull, Episcion was well adapted for crushing bone, with an enlarged fourth premolars like some hyenas. Living in a highly competitive environment, with other large predators including the bear Agriotherium, the feliform Barbarophilus, and the saber-toothed cat Amphimacorodus, Episcion was capable of pursuing prey over relatively short distances in comparison to modern large canids. By around 15 million years ago, Borophagine diversity began to decline. This was due to several different factors, including the arrival of felids from Eurasia during the early Miocene. These stealthy predators, complete with retractable claws and able to kill quickly after a sudden ambush, were simply more effective in their respective niche. Climate change was also a contributing factor, with the cooling and drying conditions of the later Miocene reducing North America's open woodlands in favour of prairies and grassland. The bulky Borophagines, which preferred at least partially wooded environments, were at a disadvantage here, particularly when compared to their smaller and leaner canine cousins, such as the adaptable Canis leprophagus. The specialised Borophagus was the only genus to persist into the Pliocene, dying out at the end of the period and consigning the Borophagines to extinction. Thanks for watching everyone. The next episode will be focused on the early evolution of Therapsids, including the basal Biomasutians. See you again soon. Cheerio.